G'day Starlo here. It's a fairly mild and slightly breezy day in early winter on the far south coast of New South Wales and I'm out on one of my local lakes heading up into a creek to chase a few brim. I haven't fished this system for quite a while so I've got no idea where the brim are at the moment. They do move around a fair bit. I'm going to see if I can find some, try a couple of different strategies. I've got two fairly similar looking outfits here. They're both based around 1000 size Shimano spin reels on quite light two metre long rods. Uh, they're both spooled up with fine braided line, but I've got different lures on each and slightly different leader setup. So on one, I've got a little hard body. It's actually a little RT Broughton uh, lure on there, a little uh, floating diving hard body. And that's on a six pound leader, which oh, I'm feeling a little bit nervous about because there's some pretty gnarly snags up here. The other one, I've got a 10 pound leader on. I'm not mucking around and I've got a, a semi weedless plastic. It's a, a squidgy prawn rigged on a uh, a weedless style snag proof worm hook with a, an integrated weight. I should be able to chuck that back into the, the deeper cover and not get hung up quite so much. So it'll just depend on where the fish are and what they're doing, whether they're out on the front of the snags or they're buried right back in the timber. And with the bright sunshine that we've got at the moment, I suspect that they're going to be deep under cover and I'm gonna to have to use the plastic to winkle them out. And then hopefully a little bit later in the day as the sun sinks, we might get a few on the hard body, but you never can tell how a brim session is going to pan out. Well, I'm about to start fishing and I'm going to kick off with the soft plastic, but there's two things that I'm going to do first. One of them is put some S factor on the lure. It just gives me so much more confidence. This stuff makes the fish hang on to it and it really seems to convince them that it's something edible. Often they'll come back a couple of times if they miss it the first bite. And the other thing I'm gonna do is set my drag. That is definitely too light. I'm gonna go for a take no prisoners drag, about as tight as I dare get away with, with four pound braid and a 10 pound leader. And we're coming up on the first couple of snags. It'll be interesting to know if the fish are here in the bottom end of the creek or if they're higher up. And the only way to find out is to fish. That'll stop them in their tracks, I hope. <laughs> There's a bunch of cormorants up here on one of these snags, which I always reckon is a pretty good sign because if the shags are on the snags, there'll be bait underneath. A couple of fairly scratchy looking bits of structure over here on the right. But there's a heron there, white faced heron. And that's another good sign. He wouldn't be there unless there were some little bait fish or prawns or something like that in along the edges. Really um, pays off to concentrate on stuff like that. Pay attention to the, the details. And the presence of a bird like that can make the difference. There go the, the cormorants all just took off from the snag on the other side. The other thing is when they take off, they tend to, um, shall we say, dump fuel. <laughs> They lighten their cargo a bit as they take off. You don't want to be right underneath them. But uh, brim are not above eating a bit of that <laughs> discarded cargo either. That's a really good tip when you're up fishing sooty grunter in places like Yungala Dam up the back of Mackay in Queensland. Those sooties definitely hang around under the, uh, the cormorants and feed on their droppings. And I'm pretty sure brim do exactly the same thing. All right, let's start fishing. You know, I got that one in close to the snag, but not really close enough. I think I'm gonna to have to get right in there. I just fish it very, very slowly, just with a lift drop lift. And I'm particularly aware and looking for any bites on the drop as I'm watching that belly of line as the lure sinks. I'm looking for that little telltale tick. And if it happens, I'm gonna set the hook quite hard because with this snag resistant rig that I've got on, you really need to punch that hook point in Otherwise you'll miss the fish. Not the best bit of country. Let's go and try the one the cormorants were sitting on. A few nice shadows starting to come out onto the water already. It's about 2.30 in the afternoon. And the days are fairly short at this time of the year. By 4.30 I'm gonna be probably headed for the car. It'll be getting cold 
and rather dark. All right, this one looks a bit better. Oh, that was a terrible cast. Needed to go another three or four meters further in. Still fish the, the retrieve out. You never know, there could be a fish sitting out wider. Don't just crank it straight back in and cast again. And there we are, there was one sitting out a little bit wider. Oh, I'm gonna back pedal. How about that? That was a terrible cast. I was well short of the snags. I can back that drag off a little bit now that I've got him out in the open. I was so far short of the snags, but there was a fish there. I don't think he's a monster, but he's not a bad brim. Not a bad way to open your account on second or third cast. Oh yeah, no. Oh, he's actually a pretty good fish. Oh. They go so hard. I'm glad I didn't hook him deep back in the cover because I think he might have given me a little bit of strife. Oh, he's a lovely fish. Look at this. One of the other reasons I like to back pedal away is there could be other fish sitting on that snag. So I just want to keep clear of them. Wow. What a great way to start a session in a system, as I said, that I haven't fished for a few months. He's a corker of a fish. Oh, yes. Big southern black brim. I might have to grab my net. Gotta have everything within reach in a kayak. I'd like to show you this bloke up close because it is one serious brim. Oh, how about that? That's the way I like to start a session. Look at the size of that thing. Wow. That is a beautiful brim. He'd be every bit of oh, 43 or 44 to the tips. He's a good 40 to the fork. Very, very heavily built. Look where he's pinned on the outside of the lip. He's picked that prawn up and I struck hard and pinned him actually through the top of the outside of the lip. As I said, very, very happy with that. <laughs> I managed to drift right out into the middle of the river, which is good. I'll release him out here rather than close to the snags. There you go. Little prawns come out. How good does he look with the sun on him? All right, mate, you can go. Thank you so much for visiting. That's what I call kicking off a session in style. Wonder if we can do better than that. Maybe not. <sighs> all right. I've repositioned myself on the same snag. This was the snag that had all the cormorants sitting in it, by the way. They took off while we were over the other side of the creek. And I'm wondering if that's why that brim was out from the snags a little bit because of exactly that phenomenon that I talked about of the cormorants taking a big dump as they take off and the, the brim keying in on it. After all, all it is is um, well minced up bait fish. That's what they eat, lots of little fish. So their, uh, their guano is probably loaded with good stuff. Don't think I'd want any, but it's a bit better. Still not super tight. Oh, yeah, it got eaten on the drop. Wow, there's a few fish in there. Back up a little bit. That got eaten on the drop. Just take the time to straighten the lure up, make sure it's sitting all right on that hook. It's the only thing with these snag resistant hooks, this rigging method, you do miss a few fish. Oh, that could be a good spot. Snagged. That's the problem. Now, do we bust the lure off? So as not to spook the other fish, or do we go in and get it? No, because it's the first decent snag we've fished, I think we'll just go in and get it and assume that there's going to be more up here. It's a fine line between getting it in the right spot and getting hung up. I'm having a really careful look as I come in here too, just to see if I can spot any fish. Also getting a better idea of the, the architecture of the snag for the next time that I fish it which could even be later this evening when we come back down. 
back here, I've got my lure. Oh, it's a, it's a tangle of timber down there. I don't know if you can see it, but down in here there's all manner of gnarly stuff. I very much doubt we'll get a fish this close to the snags. But stranger things have happened. Yep, we did, we did. Oh, that's close quarter stuff. That is close quarter stuff. Oh, back pedaling, back pedaling. Oh, that was on about a, a four or five metre cast. And that fish ate that right under that tree. <laughs> I'm glad I had that really tight drag set. I've backed right out now. I'm dragging him out into the middle of the river. I don't know. Oh, I was going to say, I don't think he's as big as the last one, but he might be. Oh, don't let anyone tell you Brim can't fight. <laughs> they are just awesome fish. Oh, he's very nearly as big as the last one. Oh, my goodness. Net. I can't even see the lure. I think he's inhaled it. No, it's, it's just in his lip again. It's not quite as big as the first one, but I tell you what, there's not a whole lot in it. Uh, uh, he's certainly not as heavy as that first one was. Ooh well, I can't believe we were sitting nearly on top of that fish. Oh, he was not going to get off. That wide gabe hook's gone right around his, his jawbone. Going to need the pliers for this one. Don't know what shape my hook will be in when it get, comes out of here. Oh yeah, came out alright, I think, without damaging the hook. It's got a little bit of a saw there on the side. He's pretty clean on this side. Mighty handsome fish. Off you go, mate. Wow, what a start. <laughs> My hands are shaking. <laughs> Might get the big one today. This whole edge looks good. Plenty of snags. Reasonable amount of depth. Could be a fish anywhere down here. Maybe not up there in the tree though. You idiot. I'm going to blame the sun in my eyes for that one. <laughs> uh, I'll get a possum. Bonus. Straighten him up. Oh, it's a beautiful little kingfisher in there. Oh, some cormorants. Let's see if these ones know what they're doing. A great bite. Oh, so definite that bite. Backpedaling. Uh, uh, the cormorants, <laughs> they're right on the money today. Uh, oh wow, it was such a definite bite, and it's just like hitting a brick wall when you strike. Not as big as those first couple, but still a lovely brim. Lifting this one by the leader. Oh, nice fat fish. Just a very clean, perfect fish, that one. Classic southern black brim. Neatly pinned. There we go.
All right, let's see if there's some more in there. That was a fair way out from the timber. I just saw some bait fish jump in here. And that's got to be a good sign. Oh yeah, this one. Yeah, that was right where that bait jumped too. Mm, yeah, a little shower of bait fish. I reckon the brim were onto them. Another decent fish. Probably a bit heavy for a lift, but what the heck? There we go. Ooh, yep. Certainly got my money's worth out of this prawn. Again, just pinned beautifully in the roof of the mouth. I think the prawn might have finally given up the ghost. It's been torn once too often. I think that's my smallest one today <laughs> and a lot of days you'd be pretty happy if that was your best brim. Alright, let's check this prawn out. Can he be resuscitated? Probably could, but... I'm... Oh yeah, look, I'm... Oh. In fact, you know what? I'm going to give the hard body a go. Alright, now this is going to be interesting because... I've got finer braid and a six pound leader on this one, so it might be uh, a bit exciting. I'll go as tight as I dare. Oh, there's a great snag up ahead. That was cool though, seeing that little shower of bait fish getting the plastic straight in there and getting nailed. They're definitely coming out from the snags and starting to cruise and look for a feed, which is a good time to go the hard body. Really important, I find, with southern black brim on hard bodies to incorporate lots and lots of pauses into the retrieve. Just let the lure stop, slowly rise in the water column, and that's often when they hit it. If you just crank it, you don't catch anywhere near as many. You'll catch plenty of yellowfin brim by just cranking a hard body. But these southern black brim, they love pauses. All right, let's get one right back. And the gnarly stuff. Oops, I've got a loop there. Very important when that happens to get it out. Because if you keep casting with that loose loop on the spool, you are going to end up with a tangle. Nothing sure. Nice long cast. Building those little pauses or stops into the retrieve is so important. And so is tying your hard body to your leader with a small loop knot so that it swims properly. These little things make all the difference when you're targeting brim. Oh, there's one. Oh, well out from cover. I felt a little bump. I was looking up the river there because I think I saw some mullet. I felt the lightest bump and paused and whack. I don't think he's real big. No, he's all right. Mm, 
Nice to get one on the hard body. Now I think I will use the net because of the six pound leader. for the hard body. Oh, and of course, treble hook in the net. I'll get it out of him first, or her. That's definitely my smallest one today. Now, let's get this lure out of here. Alright. Such good water. They're gonna be in there. Yep. Oh. oh no, come on, come out of there. Come out of there. Oh, back pedal. Oh, six pound litre wasn't a great idea. Uh, I got him out of the worst of it now. Such strong fish. Let's have a look at you. What do you like? Really nice fish. It's dragging me back into the snag again. I've got to just backpedal out again. Because there's going to be more in there. They're loving the hard body at this time of the day. Yeah, he's not a bad fish. I thought he must be pretty solid the way he was pulling line. See if I can do a comfort lift on this one. Without getting a treble in my hand. Oh, what a, what a gorgeous fish. And look at that shimmy. He's wearing it up the side of his face. Hmm. Is a lovely lovely fish no marks or red spots or anything it's just in immaculate condition gosh this has been a good session I'm gonna knock off pretty soon I don't need to catch a lot more fish <laughs> I just love it when you come out prospecting an area you haven't fished for months and you can find some fish. It's just a matter of using techniques that you know or produce the goods. Not sure what condition my treble's gonna be in. Oh, yeah, it looks all right. Ooh, drifted right in on one of the snags. Let's get him back in the water. In you go, mate. See if we can get another one out of here on the hard body. Oh, <laughs> I reckon the loop knot. Yup, she's locked down again. Yep, I'm gonna retie. Just move out here in the middle and retie that. It's nice having a fresh knot for each fish anyway. There are other loop knots you could use, but I don't trust them in, in the real light stuff. I like the uni. Give yourself a bit of line to play with. Form the backhand loop. And I go through five times when I'm um, doing the loop, or even six, certainly no less. So instead of sliding it all the way down, I keep these fingers there and just lock it in place. Pull on the tag, tighten everything up, and there you go, you've got a little loop. Like I said, but we'll slide down Oh, look, and when you trim your tag ends off, 
don't just drop them in the creek or on the ground take them home with you even those little bits of nylon it all adds up all right because i've been handling the lure and may have put a bit of human scent on it i'm going to put a little bit of s factor on there just put a little blob on rub it all over including on the treble hooks okay ready to roll back into the snag <laughs> I'm a bit cocky at the moment, but I reckon I'm going to get done before the night's out. One of these is going to just steamroll me back into the snags and bust that six pound leader, I reckon. But anyway, it's all good fun till someone gets hurt. Oh, I just saw a, a bit of movement in there. I reckon that might be brim. Looks like a snag that was designed by a committee of fishermen, this one. Yeah. Oh, he's close to cover. He's close to cover. See that big pause I gave it? And that's when he ate it. Oh, 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 no, oh, no, oh, no. Oh, this is a big one. Can I get him out? Oh, oh come out. Come out. Oh, that was hairy. That was really hairy. We're not out of trouble yet. We've drifted over another snag. Oh, he's not even as big as I thought he was. He's just full of fight. Best session. <laughs> so clean and silver this fish too. Great way to get a hook in your hand this. Uh, oh he's pretty solid. Not overly long but have a look at the girth on that fish. Well, that's why it fought so well. It was hooked under the under the chin. Gee I love these little lures. Dread to think how many big brim I've caught on those lures. Beautiful purple tones in his back or her back. Probably a male actually. The females are usually starting to really get a bit of weight on with the, the row by this time of year. They won't spawn till the springtime, but um, they start to develop it now. Gosh, I love them. <laughs> I must have caught an unbelievable number of brim in my life and I never ever get sick and tired of them. I just think that they're a fascinating fish and challenging and they fight well they look good what more do you want from a fish really Off you can. Ooh. guess what i've got to tie another loop knot <laughs> it's good gives me time for my hands to stop shaking uh, i think i've fallen for the one more cast syndrome that all fishermen do we just can't stop, especially when it's a good session like this. This is really interesting. I don't know if you can see the cormorant on the branch up ahead of me, but there was actually something rippling in the water underneath him, and I reckon it's a broom. He's going to take off in a minute. Probably dump fuel, and that brim's going to be looking up. Put a long one up there, I reckon. Yeah, that might get one. Yep, oh, oh, got him. He had a couple of whacks at that before he came up solid. Right under the cormorants again. Oh, he's a bit, a bit big to lift on the six, but I'll do it. Oh. Just. You see why I like these shimmies? <laughs> Ray, you made a good lure, mate. What do you reckon? One more cast? 
<laughs> Who am I kidding? I'm going to have another cast. Probably got time for about another dozen casts and then I'll be heading back out across the lake, back to the car and home to the fire because it's starting to get pretty cool. Hope you've enjoyed watching how I go about checking out an area I haven't fished for a few months using a couple of techniques that I know will produce fish. Snag proofed plastics well back in the cover and then the hard bodies a little bit later in the day as the fish started to move out. Brim are a fascinating fish. You can catch them in so many different ways and that's one of the things I love about them. Anyway, until next time, this is Starlo wishing you tight lines and one last cast. Oh, I got a bump. I did catch a couple more too, and by the time I finally pulled stumps and started chasing the swans back down the creek, the sun had well and truly set. But of course, I just couldn't pedal past that very first shag snag without throwing one last cast at it. And here's what happened when I did. Oh, oh straight onto it. As soon as it landed. <laughs> Talk about a last cast fish. It's a good one too. The absolute last vestiges of light. I couldn't help myself on the way back out. I had to go have a go at that first snag I hit on the way in. And uh, with the hard body, it worked. Oh, looks like a pretty good fish too. He actually ate that as it landed. Oh, spinning the kayak around, giving you a look at the beautiful sunset back there. This fish has given me some. It didn't do much at first, but it's really carrying on now. It's finally woken up. That's a lovely fish. Wow, that's got some weight in it. Look at that for a gnarly head. <laughs> Picking up the last of the light. What a lovely way to end a memorable session. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that and that you've learnt something from it. I mean, I, like I said, I haven't fished this waterway for a few months, but I know a couple of techniques that work. Let's have one last look at him. In the setting sun. And we'll get him back in the water. And that is time to go home. Till next time, tight lines. <laughs>